I'm hard to destroy. We in Zora. So I went on and created a world on my own, created a family on my own, created a neighborhood and a church and a community on my own. But there are 30, 3 million refugees around the world, and all of them have been denied an opportunity. They've all been denied an opportunity to raise their families. They've all been denied an opportunity to live their lives. And they're all struggling to find this one chance so they can change the world around them. Now, am I first by that? Yes, a little. But we don't sit down and just watch, right? My, my, my mentality is that I can never let my past poison my future. So, the way, what I believe is whatever happened in the past, I'll get up, move forward, and make something of myself, right? My best days are still up ahead of me. And that's my mentality. That's what I believe. My best days are still up ahead of me. And the only way I survived all this, the only way I survived over 10 years in different countries, in different terrible ways, in prisons, in different wars, through prayers. And I had one single prayer that I said every day. I'll say it when I'm going up, the, up, the, up and down the hills of Zimbabwe. I'll set it down when I was in the desert of Kalahari in Botswana. And I'll set it when I was down in the street of Johannesburg in South Africa. And it was like, save me, O God, for the waters have come down to my neck. I sink in a muddy death where there's no foothold. I've come into the deep waters and the flood waters engulfed me. I'm worn out calling for help. My throat patched, my eyes fell looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hair of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. You know my folly, O oh God. My guilt is not hidden from you. May those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. May those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. For I've endured scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a stranger to my brothers, and an alien to my own mother's son. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insult of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and feast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sad clothes, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mocks me, and I am the song of the drunkard. Now, 75 years ago, there was a young girl, a 15-year-old girl, that landed in America. Her whole world was changed by men, by evil men. But just like me, she never stayed down. She knew that her best days were still up ahead of her. She came here. She struggled, she fought. She arrived here with two dollars and a couple cents in her pocket. But she started building a new world for herself. And four years ago, about three years ago, I found myself sitting in a room with this lady. And she was 90 years old. And they were throwing a celebration for her. There were bands played, people sang and danced. A lot of people celebrated, we ate and rejoiced. And I stood up and did a poem in honor of her. But as she was, standing, she was sitting up there looking at me and saying thank you to some of the things, the words that I wrote, the only thing that was going down my mind is, was in my mind were, I wish one day I would live as long as she has, and at my 90 year, you know, my 90 year anniversary, People would celebrate me like this and look back at how I've lived my life and how I've affected my world. So she inspired me. She became a friend. And so there's so many times that we sat together, talked, maybe share an event together. I've always want to, wanted to walk the pattern that she walked. I may have not been there when she was born, but she has really lived the life that I, I want to live. Her name was Rose Bill. 
Now, Roseville is a 93-year-old woman. She's the sole um, Holocaust survivor in Idaho. She's spoken in so many places in Egypt. I never had a chance to hear her. I would love you to go and uh, go to Human Rights Education Center and just ask for a chance to even have a, an evening with her. Maybe a day, maybe a handshake. And you'll see how your world will be changed. She has changed mine. But the only thing that makes me bring her name up is because out of everything that she has endured, she still suffers a little bit of abuse in some ways. And a few, years, a few, a few, a few months ago, somebody told me, like, oh, you know, Rose Bell, she's been having some head calls. Somebody will call her home and tell her to go back to Germany, like we don't want her here. Now, I've had some of those, and sometimes I'm offended. But I, then I imagine, I'm like, you know, what if I'm 90? Who is, what kind of a person will sit down and just call a 93-year-old woman just to hurt her? You know, that's the world we're not supposed to live in. So we have to create a world that we want our children to live in. And that's the world that allows us to spread love, opportunity, and possibilities. And um, she always wants me to look at her like she's 20. So every time I talk to her, she's like, oh, no, I'm not 93. I'm 20. A few years, a few mo last month I called her, and she was like, oh, I'm sick. I don't want you to see me because they're going to think I'm old. So you have to get better first so you can see me like I'm 20. No. So Human, Human Rights Education Center is the place where you can learn more about her. And they're the proud builders of the Idaho and Frank Memorial. So I hope one day you get a chance to be changed by what she has done. Uh, but just as she was a woman coming here and changed the world, my mother was a woman too, and she has done so many great things in life. But she also endured a lot of, life, a lot of terrible things. So this next piece is actually well, based on violence against women in the Congo. She said, she would prefer a trail of tears over another sexual violence, a thorough beating over another political instability. Covered in shame and fear, I could read her mind. I could see tears in her eyes before they even reached her eyelashes, and I know she was carrying the burden that women in war zone carries. I know this because my mother was one of them, and up until today, she still suffers the aftermath of the abuses. She can't sleep at night. The night brings horror. The day brings smiles in her children, but the night brings flashbacks. Watching her cry all night, I am certain that she would prefer death over another sexual violence, a trail of tears over another rape. But I told her, remember, even slavery had an expiration date. So I know you'll find peace right there where you are. She said, my bones are weak. I can't protect my daughters no more. My voice is gone. I can't scream any louder. My eyes are getting lazy. Tears easily flows out. It is disgusting knowing that we are women bringing up sons, sons that are turned into these little monsters, joining armies of abusers and rapists, Taught how to destroy their mothers and kill their fathers and abuse their sisters with no remorse. That is why I would prefer a bullet to the head over another sexual violence, a trail of tears over another war. But I told her, remember, even slavery had an expiration date, so I know you'll find peace right there where you are. Her prayers are not for a brighter future. Her prayers are not for material things. She is just praying for a little dignity for her sons to not witness these atrocities, for her daughters to not get raped. But I guess that's too much to ask. What am I gonna tell her? Is she gonna believe me if I tell her that it's gonna be okay? But it might not be. It might be hard, tough, complicated, and bloody. And I'm certain that she would prefer death over another sexual violence, a trail of tears over another war. But I told her, remember, even slavery had an expiration date, so I know you will find peace right there where you are. She looked at me with despair. I looked at me with disbelief. I'm like, can we hug now to ease the pain? She's like, no, my son, you still don't understand. See, we are women. Being stripped in front of our sons and daughters, that's a curse, not a blessing. I can take any torture thrown at me, but I cannot take another rape or watch my daughter going through one. I cannot live with the thought of knowing that my husband left me because I was abused. I can't live one more night to look into the eyes of my son and see the reflection of how he was conceived. And that is why I would prefer death 
over another sexual violence, a trail of tears over another gang rape, a knife on my throat over another political instability. But I told her, remember, even slavery had an expiration date, so I know you find peace right there where you are. You find a place of peace right there where you are. You find peace right there where you are. Now, growing up in the Congo, I witnessed a lot of execution. And these were not executions like the electric chairs you do here. This was a firing squad. And these executions were of people who were our friends. There were kids who were 14, 15, 16, 17. These kids were abducted from their families, joined, forced to join the army, taught how to kill and destroy, fed with alcohol, drugs, and all these kind of things, turned into animals, went out and fought, and won the wars for the rebels. They came back and were thrown in the community as policemen and just regular soldiers. But since they were abused and destroyed already, the only thing they knew how to do was to also bring that in the community. So they'll rob people in, at night and attack people at night, as 16, 17, 18 year old police people. But when they attack people or they kill somebody, they will be apprehended. And then the next day, they will announce on the news that the policeman or the soldier who killed such and such will be executed at such place. And our whole neighborhood will go there to watch this kid being shot by a firing squad. By the same adult, the same people that brought them, initiated them into the army, the same people that fed them with alcohol, they will shoot them all up there and destroy them in front of their friends and families, in front of their, their mothers crying. There's nothing they could have done. And growing up seeing all this, we still had few other people who joined the army, who came out, who watched all these things and they were saved. And they moved on to start working to change their own world. And um, the only thing that is always thought of them is that we have to find a way to apologize, uh, to, uh, to forgive. We have to find a way to forgive. You know, we have to find a way to move on. We have to find a way to not inflict revenge, you know, and others and stuff. So my next piece is um, all about forgiveness. It's called A Living Witness. It's in my first book. Standing there shivering with a gun facing me. With no mercy, I was forced to kill or be killed. With all the people staring at me, knowing that they all got a turn on a machete, slaughtering their own brothers out of choice. I look at the people and my vision dimmed, just like a midnight dream. Nevertheless, it was not a dream because 10 people had already been slaughtered. Being only 13, I never remembered what happened next because it was all like a dream just like a dream. I am a living witness. You were there when they were killing them. You were there when they disappeared. It was not easy to bear the pain. I understand it hurts. I know it's painful, but I know this, not because I heard, but I was there with you. We suffered the same pain. We went through the same torture. We suffered the same loss. But it's time to change and move on, because we are a living witness. I understand you hate them. You always talk about revenge. But that's not what I'm about. I have moved on so long now. And so you should, because not every Hutu is my brother. Not every Tutsi is my enemy. Not every Congolese is my friend. Not every Rwandan is my enemy. Not every black is my brother. Not every white is my enemy. I'm a man of peace, and peace is my friend and my brother. I will spread peace around the world. I will take no part in your evil deeds. I will never do the evil you want to do. I have seen what you have seen. I have suffered what you suffered. I endured the pain that you endured. But I don't know what you know, and I don't want to do the things you want to do. 
And I certainly don't believe in revenge that you believe in. I believe in God, love, peace, and forgiveness. I have moved on so long now. And so you should, because I am a living witness. And so you are.